Thanks for joining us for Religious Hard Talk. And Ian Boyne, former teen television host, now a born-again Christian, a struggling born-again Christian, Pepita Little, appears on Religious Hard Talk to talk about the real difficulties of Christian transformation. I've spoken to a number of Christians who have talked about the seamless transition into Christian life, the transformation that they have experienced. But I speak to Pepita about the intense struggles she has been enduring, still battling ganja addiction after years of committing her life to Christ. She will tell us about being involved in a sexual relationship with a gangster after becoming a Christian, or struggles with fornication after becoming a Christian, or affair with the son of, of the pastor of her church. You know, all of these things, I mean, even she's expressing a bit of alarm when it is put this, <laughs> uh, this graphically. She will talk to us in this really hard, real talk uh, today. Pepita Little, unplugged, on religious hard talk. Pepita, so good to, to have you. This interview came after you gave a very moving, poignant, um, Plea. tear <laughs> filled um, message on, on, on Facebook where you were pleading with Christians to understand other Christians who go through the kinds of struggles that you go through, where you are pleading with them not to condemn Christians who find it difficult to address to the Christian ethical way. And I was so moved by that, and there were, there were several persons who watched it who were really moved by the kind of, you know, plaintive uh, plea that you made in that um, Facebook post. So, so we want to talk about your Christian experience, but first we'll talk about the, the pre-conversion uh, days. Mm -hmm. I, of course, um, knew you as a 16-year-old uh, <laughs> uh, doing intense. Right. And I remember coming at that time, I mean, how excellent you were. You told how, me. <laughs> how natural you were as a, as, as a host, how spontaneous you were. I mean, TV is more difficult than, than, than people who don't do it um, realize. But, but, you, but you warmed to TV um, and did so well. And you did intense for about two and a half years. Right. Then you, you had gone on to do uh, Red, cell, Rising, Rising Stars, Chill Room, Rising Stars, Chill Room mm -hmm. then Red Stripe Football, Football Mondays. Um, Mondays. You were doing well in uh, TV. Had to leave TVJ over unfortunate um, um, to unfortunate <laughs> circumstances. circumstances. So you have had a you, you've had a troubled life or a or a very challenging life to um, to make an understatement. But but let's talk about you know the glory days of of TV. You had started early. Tell us about uh, about that. All right. So you're 16 years old and you get this opportunity to go on TV. Oh my gosh, and you have been dreaming about this opportunity ever since you were born. You had been dreaming about TV for What? I used to stand in front of the mirror and read the newspaper and pretend oh. that I was reading me. Mm. You know, and I had a passion for acting and singing. I was in drama club at school. I was always on the choir. You were at ho Holy Childhood? Holy Childhood mm -hmm. High School. Mm. Yeah, and, um, you know, so that was just me. That so was a dream come true when you that had was the opportunity. Just, that was... That was me. That was everything yes. I was because that was my passion. For it. Yes. I prepared for it. I dreamt about it. I talked to God about it. Yes. I wasn't saved yet, but you know, my, I was brought up in a home where my parents did believe mm. in God. They did go to church. They were not devout Christians, but they did have faith in How God. How did the opportunity come to do intense? The opportunity to do intense. I was attending Holy Childhood High School where I had a history teacher called Miss Epps. And she wanted to do a history video mm -hmm. for the class. I don't remember what she wanted to do the video, use the video for, but she got professionals to come and do it, which was uh, Gareth Daly, mm -hmm. who at the time was a presenter here That's at right. TVJ, and uh, Andrew Wedderburn, who is a videographer, still a videographer. 
she introduced me to them and said, you know, this young lady would like to become the okay. first teen host. Um, I mean, I know there are other people on it, but I felt special. Yes. Yeah. I felt well, like when I went there, different. I yeah. was going to do something really okay. different, you yes. know, because that's just the type of person I am. Mm -hmm. And I met them. They would carry me out to... I remember the first Dancing Dynamite shoot, I was there. I labeled the camera. Probably my writing is on the old tapes. Yes, <laughs> they right. carried me and they, they showed me behind the scenes before they introduced me to Sharon Shota, oh, who was yeah, looking for a host for, for Intense at the time. Mm -hmm. And they just called me for the audition and I went. Mm -hmm. And it was natural for you. I mean, there was an immediate uh, connection that, that you made with, 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 the, with the audience. Um, I was just being myself, you know. I used to worry at first when I started um, of what people would say because they weren't always very nice because everybody's used to Kiki because yeah. Kiki was a previous Kiki host. Was, yes. And everybody's used to her. Yes. And Jamaicans or human beings on a whole, they're not very susceptible to change. Yeah, they're yeah. not very welcoming Amenable to, change. to change. Right. Yeah. So um, I had and a Kiki hard time. And Kiki was a great star. So and that, you know, right, it would be big shoes to big fill. Big shoes to fill, yeah. And, you know, they would say, oh, my, there was this gentleman that called in once and said that my uh, area was too large uh, for the TV. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I would get calls like that. Yeah. They would get calls, you know, and they would tell me and stuff. And it would really break my confidence because I was the type of person that what people said about me mattered you. and it and it affected me. Mm -hmm. And I was in denial for so long that I was like this. Because yeah. I kept saying, I don't care about people and what they think, but, but you did. It, it, I did. But you never made that show on TV. I certainly never, I never saw it. Man, I cried. I cried in between um, Chilum. You can ask Chilum. any other videographers here today. <laughs> yes. I <laughs> cried in between Chilum takes. I had tantrums. I yes. cried and cried and cried. And <laughs> <laughs> it was rough because I was a teenage girl yes, in, a, in, a, in a big people world, you yes. know? And I was trying to act mature, mm -hmm. but I don't think the people around me realized just how young I was. Yes. You yes. know, because I was just graduating and from high school. Had fame. I mean, because Rising Stars um, was even more popular then. When I went on that, everything went Every, sky yeah. high. Everybody started. Every but, I mean, knew people you. knew me from Intense, course, you know. Intense, but yes. then a, another set of persons who watch Rising Stars that don't necessarily get to mm -hmm. watch Intense. You know, because there's different different audience for different times, different, different programs. Yeah, demographics, yeah. And so I captured a different demographic with, yes. with Rising Stars, and that is how I really became and how you extra dealt with popular. That fame. Boy, how did I <laughs> deal with it? It wasn't difficult because I lived in Port Royal, which is far away from everything. Oh. So it would be hard to readily jump and go to everything, every party out. or whatever. You I, did. Of, I did. I did. I did, and I even lived with um, one of my friends in Millsboro um, for Mil a time. Okay. So Millsboro mm -hmm. allowed me to be more flexible. But mm -hmm. Port Royal was really difficult for me because a lot of people, when you, you know, you go to a party and forget to drop your friend home that lives in Port Royal. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's so a strain. I would use that to, to determine the real people in my life as mm -hmm. well. You know, so j living in Port Royal was really good. So, so, so you lost a job. The reason uh, why I could handle the fame, yes. living in Port Royal. I yeah. think that's why I handled it well. Because well, I was far away from everything. How, how do you handle now the, 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 the drop from that height when you had to leave TVJ, when you, when you, you were um, fired from, um, from, from TVJ? How, how, how did you process that? I apparently was depressed were, <laughs> for yeah, about yeah. two, three years, and I didn't know. You were depressed that And long. I didn't know. Because I'm a very defensive kind of person. So when I'm going through pain, about the depression. I was in denial about the depression. So I would do other things, you know, to, to block out that. So you were smoking a lot. Smoking and, and just looking for love and <laughs> just... Promiscuous relationships. I wouldn't say I was promiscuous, yeah. but I did have one relationship have one with relationship. a particular person. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, Are you drinking? Yes, I did drink, but I wasn't really a drinker, like mm -hmm. drink and junk kind of person. I was really a stoner, mm. a smoker. So the smoker, the Gandra addiction, we'll talk about that. So Pepita is talking about her Christian life for the first time. A, a number of you might not have known that um, she has become a Christian. But it's a, a Christian who is struggling, um, still um, burning the spliff.
Um, she will talk to us about her life of fornication um, also. The, the, the real struggles that a number of Christians have, many of whom would not come on a program like this and talk about it. But P Peter is talking about it, is, is representing that segment, and it's a large segment of the Christian uh, population uh, who experience this kind of struggle. Religious Hard Talk, we take our first break.